Hi everyone, thanks for watching this latest video update. We're going to talk about the climate here, especially in Southern California, and provide an outlook for fall and winter 2020 and 2021. This is issued October 15th, 2020. This is Alex Tardy, meteorologist with the National Weather Service. All right, not to forget, but the water year ended 2019-2020. It was very wet across Southern California. Most areas were 150% of average, but it was very dry as shown here across central Northern California. We've had a lot of extreme events over the past five years. We can add to this list in summer of 2020, especially the temperatures, which we'll talk about in this presentation here. We've had some big wildfires as well. And with any wildfire in Southern California, flood after the fire is a concern. Three fires in particular we'll be watching very closely will be the El Dorado, the Apple, and the Valley fires. The weather pattern over the past summer and now into the fall looks like this. What this is showing is the departure from a normal weather pattern across the Pacific and California in particular. Upper level high pressure, two centers, unusually strong, warm, and persistent, creating a very dry summer across the Southwest and very warm record conditions July through September. Basically not much break in this weather pattern with the storm track unusually far north and unusually strong persistence of these high pressure cells in the atmosphere. Now, how warm has it been? This shows since mid-June all the way through October, across the entire state, it's been much above average as shown here, several degrees when averaged all together, in particular inland areas. How dry has it been? Well, the map on the right shows normally our deserts and mountains should receive precipitation, and those areas were very dry, even compared to what they should have received during these summer months. All right, here's a look at a map of California. Left-hand side is the ranking. How hot was it compared to records? The dark red are record hottest. You can see August, September across our mountains and deserts, widespread record heat. When you look at the period July through September, pretty much the same story with record heat or at least top 10 hottest, not just Southern California, but all of California. When you look at the ranking on this chart here, you can see 2020, July through September, hottest on record for the state of California. When you look at the South Coast, which includes areas from LA to San Diego, you can see it was not the hottest along the coastal areas, but it was number three as far as the ranking goes. The areas inland really suffered from the extreme heat. Speaking of inland areas, the southeast deserts of California shown here July through September. As mentioned, the hottest on record. So we had statewide heat. We had number three for the coast and number one hottest summer period July through September for our inland areas. Here's some specific locations in case you're curious in your area. Escondido was the hottest on record July through September. Palomar Mountain, a mountain location, very representative of upper level high pressure or the warm air mass, number one hottest on record. Idlewild, same thing, number one hottest on record. Again, this reflects the magnitude, strength, and persistence of upper level high pressure. When you look at the period July through September now for the desert areas, Palm Springs, not just hot because it's a desert, but number one hottest, even surpassing the hot summer of July, August, September, 2018. Now, what about some other locations that were not the hottest, but still top 10? We took a look at the records at Al Cajon in east of San Diego, number five. And then we took a location in the Inland Empire, Riverside, kind of in the heart of our area in Southern California, not the hottest, but very close. And they came in number eight as hottest July through September period with an average temperature of 80.5 degrees. So with the dry summer and the warm temperatures, as we discuss, fuel moistures continue to be not just low because it's fall, but all time record lows as shown here in the mountains of Southern California, where most of our fuels are. 
The blue area shows running below the record line here, August through October. On average, we see one Santa Ana wind event in September, three or four events in October, and then it increases to five or six when we get into November and December. So, so far this year, we've already seen three Santa Ana wind events, and we're currently going on number four. Speaking of La Nina, it is developing over the equatorial Pacific Ocean, as shown here on the latest satellite image. We see these waves and cold pockets of below average sea surface temperatures. But do note, across most of the Pacific, western, northern, and eastern, large anomalous area of much above average sea surface temperatures that have been persistent over the past few years and basically been enhanced by the weather pattern we discussed this past summer. What is the La Nina pattern that results in those conditions that we talk about across the West being variable? Well, it's the jet stream. That's what brings us rain or doesn't bring us rain. It all depends on where that jet stream lines up over the course of a week, a month, or an entire season. The jet stream, when we have those cold ocean temperatures along the equator, tends to be variable, all or nothing type of weather pattern, especially across the West. We've had some really extreme conditions over the past several years. And when we look forward to the expectations for this winter, it's important to keep in mind that La Nina and even El Nino has brought a wide variety of rain and precipitation to Southern California. We've seen La Nina years that are dry, La Nina years that are very wet. Now, typically when you put all the La Ninas together, this is what it looks like. It tends to be drier when they're all averaged together. Doesn't mean there's not wet ones, and there are, as we showed earlier, but it tends to be drier across Southern California, wetter than average in the Pacific Northwest. When will it rain first this fall? Well, right now it doesn't look like we'll see any rain for October, but that could change when we get into mid-November. So right now it looks like the first chance of rain may hold off until mid-November, which makes fire conditions even more critical, especially when Santa Ana winds occur. What is the official outlook? Well, this outlook calls for November to be drier than average, so a slow start to the rainy season for Southern California, but an active storm track potentially setting up in the Pacific Northwest. What does this mean for temperatures? Well, with the dry conditions, it means warmer than average temperatures, so continuation of the very warm conditions we've seen all summer and now this fall. How is the signal showing up for the winter, December through February? This is a collection of different weather models that go out in months and even seasons and takes a snapshot of what is expected. Almost all the models are showing significant drying across our region or below average temperatures. It doesn't mean it won't rain. Heavy rains are still possible, but the overall signal for December through February is drier than average because of that La Nina developing mainly. Now, the official outlook that was released today calls for wetter conditions, and this is based largely on the setup of a moderate La Nina. Wetter conditions than average over the Pacific Northwest, storm track mainly staying over far northern California in the Pacific Northwest. So for us, being on the wrong side of the storm track, drier than average conditions. Does not mean we won't see any heavy rain, however. Pockets of heavy rain or isolated storms in a La Nina variable pattern are often what occur during the winter. So you might go three to five weeks without much rain at all and one big storm hits. Temperatures, unfortunately a continuation of warmer than average temperatures that we've already seen record breaking temperatures in July through September and that's expected to continue right through the heart of the winter. Drought conditions will likely expand as shown here in the tan yellow shade over Southern California. Drought already continues across Northern California and Eastern California in the Great Basin where it could worsen. Here's the summary. August was very dry across the region. We had a very late monsoon that set up but only brought isolated precipitation. Record dry monsoon in our deserts. August and September, and for that matter, July through September, hottest on record. Despite the wet year last year, our fuel levels, the live and the dead fuel moistures, are critically low. In fact, dead fuel moistures are all-time low. And part of that's because we've had 14 heat waves 
that have impacted our region, including most inland areas. We've also seen record warm ocean temperatures, which continue in parts of the Pacific Ocean. We've seen major lightning outbreaks that led to widespread fires across California. In fact, we are looking closely at four fires for flood after fires that includes El Dorado and Apple fire scars. So we now have seen the largest wildfire season in California history with 4 million acres burned. The outlook is a prediction of continuation above average temperatures and unfortunately drier than average conditions for the core of our winter 2020-21. We still can have heavy rain events though, so that's important to understand even though the overall winter is expected to be drier than average. Santa Ana potential is a little bit above average and we've already seen four week events and our peak Santa Ana season is not until late in the fall, early in the winter. And officially we are entering a La Nina, likely to be a moderate La Nina. That's the cold phase in the Pacific Ocean and that's what's driving this forecast largely for a variable type of winter as we go forward. Thanks for tuning in and enjoy the rest of your day.